Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art, and I teach watercolor, but we are going to learn about watercolor pencils today. So I have Keenan here working the camera. Hello, thank you for coming. He'll ask questions or tell us where to look. And here I have Taylor. Hi. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. Hi. Thank you for being here. So Taylor is actually part of our marketing team, and she is also a colored pencil artist and is very talented. Thank you. And so I asked her to be on this video with me to help explain the differences of watercolor pencils and coloring pencils. And also she's going to help teach some of the projects with these mediums in January. So super excited. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Thank you. And for sharing your knowledge. <laughs> So, what we're going to go over in this video is first we're going to talk about the differences between watercolor pencils and watercolor, and then we'll talk about the differences between watercolored pencils and colored pencils. Mm. And then we're going to share some techniques of um, how you can use them, and um, a few things that we just want to highlight on how to utilize this tool. And then our very last thing is we'll just share some tips that we learned along the way. Because as you're exploring a medium, you're gonna discover some things. And I will say that the first time I tried watercolored pencils, I had a hard time, because I just didn't understand how to use them. But then over time, I mean, even both Taylor and I were talking and we're like, are we doing this right? So like, <laughs> we had a lot of experimenting and we learned some stuff along the way, so we're gonna share that with you. Sweet. Okay. So I'm going to explain how watercolor pencils are different from watercolor. So um, these are the six colors that are going to be in your January box. They, the brand is Faber Castell um, Gold Faber Aqua, which are very nice watercolor pencils. Um, I, we're not going to talk about the different brands right now. I'm just going to tell you just general information about watercolor pencils in general. But I will also say that if you did not sign up for the January subscription box, we do sell uh, a 12 set of these pencils. Actually, Taylor, do you have that? I do. Nice. Yeah, so we have a 12 set on our website. So if you want to um, play with this medium and try it, um, you can. And I, I try not to overwhelm you guys with information, but also I think it's fun to introduce you to new things because we don't know what's going to be our thing until we try it, right? That's so, true. Yeah, so I just like, maybe you'll try this and you'll be like, this is what I've been looking for. Or maybe you'll try this and you'll be like, you know, I kind of like it better or worse than something. Or maybe you can just put that in with your knowledge and then like take it some here and there. It doesn't, you don't have to just be a watercolor pencil now. Like, <laughs> you don't have to just be a watercolor <laughs> pencil? You don't have to just be a watercolor pencil. I, I mean, like, you don't have to just like commit fully to one medium. You can share them, you can work with them together and all of that fun stuff. You could be a marker, <laughs> you could be a paintbrush. You can be a crayon, you can be a gel pen that's rainbow colored. Dare to dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, basically these are the watercolors that we use. They're liquid watercolors and if you need more information about watercolors in general, we have a beginner series videos all about that so you can refer to that for your knowledge. So the main things that I want to highlight with these pencils and between the paint is that with watercolor pencils, they are a drawing and painting medium, which means that you can draw and sketch with them um, and also paint with them, as in if you take a paintbrush to what you sketch with, it turns into like a painting, turns into a painting. Cool. Which is really cool and versatile. And I also wanted to give you guys some in, some different colors, especially I put neutrals in here because I say all the time that when I try and do loose sketches before a painting, I just use a watercolor pencil and that way my lines blend out when I start painting with watercolor. So. I mean, at the very least, that's what you guys can use these for. So I'm really excited for you guys to try that. So um, with watercolor pencils, because they are a drawing and painting medium, you can be as precise or loose as you want. And you'll know that as we go through the different projects that we have planned with you guys that we'll be using some pencils um, in a loose way and we'll be using some pencils in a detailed way to get maybe um, fine lines because we know that if you're not familiar with a paintbrush it's a little bit trickier to get like nice thin lines or straight lines and we are more used to pencils just from writing right so um, I'm really excited to give you guys the opportunity to see that you can utilize these along with your watercolor paintings for detailed areas or precise things um, the other thing that I want to note is these are way more travel friendly. So if you are interested in doing like 
um, plain air painting or urban sketching, like watercolor pencils are gonna be your friend because you can do like, you know, go to the park, do a little sketch of your scene using your watercolor pencils and then just grab, even a aquash brush would be great to carry around because then you just add water to it and then it turns into a painting. So those are the main um, highlights that I want to talk about for the paint and the watercolor pencils. And now Taylor's gonna tell us about how they're different from colored pencils. Exciting. <laughs> okay, so I, like Sarah was saying with the control that you have with a pencil, I prefer colored pencils over watercolor just because I'm, I don't know, it's something I'm more familiar with and you do have a lot more control over it. Um, so the main difference between watercolor pencils and regular colored pencils is the binding that they're made out of. And the binding is what determines if something is water soluble or not. So, um, and water soluble <laughs> means that it reacts with water. So you, like if you paint with something and it's water soluble, if, wet, if water gets on it, it will move. The pigment will move. And if the binding is not water soluble, like wax or oil, then the water doesn't affect the pigment move me, moving. Yes, so regular colored pencils are typically made of wax or oil, which is why they are not water soluble like yes. these are. Um, and so with colored pencils, because of the wax or oil that they're made of, their colors are typically a lot more vibrant. Um, and they have that waxy kind of sheen to them, whereas these are very matte because it's like painting with a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> like similar to gouache even, like yeah. when we talked about gouache, gouache has a really nice matte finish where like, um, and watercolor also has a matte finish where like acrylic or oil painting has more of a glossy sheen to it too. So it's the same thing with the pencils. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so with watercolor pencils, the advantage to these is that it's faster to um, cover large areas of space because the water, you know, makes it easy to spread. Oh. Um, so with regular colored pencils, it's easier to blend them because of the um, material that they're made out of. And the only way to blend these is with water. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also easier to lighten watercolor pencils because you can use water and lift away some of that pigment or mm -hmm. kind of maneuver where it goes on the page. Whereas with colored pencils, where you put it is pretty much where it is. And where the only way, yeah, mm -hmm. the only way to lighten those is if you put white on top and you can still see underneath. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else? I think that's it. I think you covered it. Cool. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go through a few different techniques. Me and Taylor will be showing them to you as we're kind of explaining them. And um, so the te first technique that I wanna show you guys is how to achieve different values with these watercolor pencils. So uh, value is all about the lightness and darkness of a color. It's very Im important in any medium that you're using because value is how we achieve form or three-dimensionality. That's the difference between a circle and a sphere. The shape is the same, but the sphere has different values on it, which creates that form, okay? So grab a watercolor pencil, any watercolor pencil you want, doesn't matter. And the big thing to remember with watercolor pencils is the pressure matters. That will determine how dark the pigment is that's going on your paper. It's also really great to have a pencil sharpener handy um, because we're gonna be using these things. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's nice to have it close by. So we have a couple different pencil sharpeners here. So to get a lighter value, what you're going to do is you're going to do light pressure, okay? So I'm gonna do three different values. I have a light pressure here. I'm going to do a medium pressure here and then I'm going to do a dark pressure. So uh, dark pressure, I mean hard pressure. Dark pressure now. <laughs> That's so, the name of a band. Yeah. That's our band. Yeah, yeah. the dark pressure. Dark pressure. <laughs> we sing classical music as high as we possibly can. <laughs> okay, so um, here we have uh, three different uh, pressures and then we're gonna add water to them and you're gonna see, you can already kind of see the value. Um, we kind of mentioned the aquash brush earlier. Taylor is gonna use that. I'm gonna use my round two, round six. You can use any paint brushes with this. So just make sure your brush is clean, grab some water, and then just add water to this. Okay. Yep, so there's our light. Here is our medium. And then here is our dark. 
So you can see that we can get some pretty big value differences here just depending on the pressure. And as we go through the different projects we have planned for watercolor pencils, we'll talk about the pressure and uh, uh, help you guys through that. Let's try doing it in one swoop. So we have, we did three different chunks. I wanna do the same thing, but we're gonna keep them connected. So I'm gonna start with light. And then I'm just gonna start kind of pressing harder and then I'm gonna be pressing really hard. Really dark. Like really, like dark pressure. Dark pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I want you to take your brush. Sarah, can you bring your paper down just a little bit? Absolutely, I can, thank you. Is that thank good? You. Yep. And then I'm just gonna add water to it and kind of keep going to the right. Wow. So now I have a value transition. I would like to say though that the pigment is gonna move similarly to how watercolor will move, which is if I take this and I work this back and forth, I will lose my value transition. And that is true for watercolor as well, just watercolor paint. So I just want you to be aware of that, that um, overworking it will get rid of the values that you have established. Okay. Next, I'm gonna show how I would do a color transition. And then of course, Taylor, if you have found a different way you're welcome to say like, this is how I learned how to do it or whatever. Okay. Um, because as we've learned, there's no one way to approach something. We have all different preferences and things that we lean towards. And really, I just wanna give you guys as much information so you can decide for yourself what works for you. There are in fact seven ways <laughs> at which we can approach everything. <laughs> there are exactly seven and seven only. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab two colors and have these be colors that like, like one of the primary color, like do like green or blue or like blue and yellow or red and yellow, like so they don't turn to mud pretty much. Don't do mm. opposites of the color wheel right now. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we have a video about color theory on our website that you can look at. Ah. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna start with yellow and I'm just going to color a section and it can be any shape, whatever form, whatever you want. And then I'm going to take red, and I like to overlap. I'm not gonna overlap the whole thing, I'm gonna start like halfway with my red, and then keep going with my red here. Okay? And then now, I'm gonna take my brush with water and just start blending. And then where it overlaps, it's gonna turn to orange, and then it's gonna turn to red. Now again, if you work the areas back and forth a lot, oh, that looks really nice, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. If you work the areas back and forth too much, you will lose that color. Mm. It helps too if you are overlapping, like the area that you overlap to do lighter pressure, so it's not such a hard line. Good tip. Ah. Um, and then, oh, I was just gonna say something and I lost it. It was gonna be gold. <laughs> It was the one tip you needed to be successful. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I think I was just ready to move on. I feel like that's it. So that is how we do a color transition there. I will like to say too that like when you're blending colors with watercolor pencils, most of the time what you do is you layer the colors like we did there and then you add water to it and then the blending takes place of colors on the paper as opposed to mixing them on a mixing tray on your palette. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is I want to talk about um, some like just fun techniques. Well, let's do, uh, let's do layering first. Okay. Because I learned a lot with layering because what you wanna do, so let's start with, I'm gonna do circles. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with a blue circle. I'm just going to do an area, okay? And then using my paintbrush, I'm gonna just turn that into a circle. Can they see that or does that need to be darker, Keenan? I think it needs to be a little bit darker. Okay. It's it's a barely their color and then the lights are a little reflective. Okay, let me do it a little bit darker so you can see what I'm talking about. Thank you. There we go, that's showing up better, yes? Yes. Okay, so when you layer colors in with coloring pencils, you do wanna make sure that they're dry before you layer the next color. 
So we're gonna give this time to dry, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you don't wait for it to dry. So I'm going to do another blue section. Okay, and let's say I want to layer a yellow circle next to it, okay? If I take my yellow and I just start drawing and doing this, these marks, my pencil marks, are going to like not enter that blue smoothly and they'll stay kind of hard. Can you still see those marks there? Yes, can you pull your paper further to the down and left so we can see on the side cam as well, please? Oh yes, thank you. Okay, so if you look at where there was the overlap where the yellow painted onto, or I drew the yellow onto the blue area, you still see those pencil marks. I can't blend those out. Oh, interesting. So when I was first playing with watercolor, I got really, or watercolor pencils, I got really frustrated because I'm like, wait, you can't layer these? What the heck? And I was like talking to Taylor about it, and she's like, Sarah, you wait for it to dry, <laughs> and then you can layer it, and the texture won't show. And I'm like, Taylor, thank you so much for doing this with me. So, oh, and you can, I'm gonna bring Taylor's over here too. You can see that a little bit better, that texture. Interesting. Which, it's not bad if you want to use that to your advantage. If you're looking for texture marks or pencil marks on your painting, you can utilize this information for that. So I just want to say, like, none of these things are bad. I'm just giving you the information so you can utilize it to whatever your preferences are. Okay, and I think... Is yours dry? Mm, I think mine's kind of close. I think it's my... Let's try it. I'm just going to go for it. Let's see what happens. But you want to make sure that this is dry. I'm doing my yellow. And then now where that yellow overlapped with my blue because my blue was dry, it's smooth. And it's a very clear layer. Wow. And the, I also really love these because even if you try and do that with the liquids, there's still a little bit of bleeding that happens with that first initial layer when you try and blend over it like this. These, they stay fairly in their space, mm -hmm. which I think is really nice. Like you can do some gorgeous like layered flower petals or something using this yeah. technique and stuff like that. <laughs> that would be so pretty. Yeah. So. Just so like when you do layering, you just want to make sure that your first layer is dry before you add on if you want it to blend smooth. Keenan. Like a pink tulip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is there anything you, you want to add about layering? Um, 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 um. I guess to kind of show, so what Sarah was saying about how you kind of mix on the paper instead of in a palette. So if you wanted purple with these colors that we're using. Should we do like orange though? Because like yeah, these colors do don't make a good purple. That, yeah, that's true. <laughs> we'll do orange. <laughs> so you literally just go like right on top of the other. And then it makes it like, see how much more Ooh, vibrant that is? Than, what? Yes. Yeah. So the more color you put down, the brighter the more vibrant it'll be. Yeah. Wow. And that's the other tricky thing with watercolor pencils is that when you add water to it, it automatically is going to lighten that pigment. So if you want like deep saturated color, you're going to have to be pressing really hard and let those layers build up. Um, but that is why for me, I, I like to use them in tandem with watercolor paint. It just makes it easier for me. But anyways. Okay. So now we did layering. Taylor, thank you for, for talking about that. And okay, I'm actually kind of excited about this one. I think this one is really cool. So this one, what you can do is you can get your paper wet first and then draw with your pencil. Now, I know that especially with the liquid paints, when we do wet on wet technique, when we drop in that paint, it just disperses and it's like does this really cool like lava lamp thing. This one is not as extreme because it's a pencil. However, you can get softer texture lines. So like if I wanted to do like a sketchy forest scene or something and maybe have the trees be a little bit fuzzy, what you can do is you get your paper wet first. So I'm just gonna do a chunk of paper wet, okay? And then I'm gonna take whatever color you want. I'm gonna dip my pencil in the water itself 
and then I'm just going to sketch. And you can see that that pigment just starts to kind of disperse and be fuzzy. And so like you can do some like cool scribbly textures. Holy and see how it kind of like blends? I really like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> That's very cool. So um, again, I am a fan of sketching texture, loose styles. So like this, this like technique really what? excites me. And then you can do the same thing maybe if you're wanting to do like a building, especially if it's like a rainy scene. Tell like me a more. city raining scene. <laughs> yes. You get your paper wet, you get your pencil wet, and you just kind of do those building lines and it's just gonna bleed and give it that cool. I know, right? So, this is yeah, cool. isn't I might that have to cool? Get these so cool. pencils. So I, I really love that technique and that is where watercolor pencils are such a joy because you can sketch with them, they'll, they'll be soft though and fuzzy and kind of messy and it's really difficult to do that with just watercolor paint and a brush. Can you do this in the opposite way that you just did that? Can you do wet pencil, wet water, will the line stay and it be fuzzy or will you Let's just wash it. it away? So if we do wet pencil on a dry paper and then Correct. add water on top, okay. So I'm gonna dip my pencil in. And then do a building, please. Never oh. mind, it's a tree, it's too late. It's entirely too late, too late. that's my bad. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that because the paper is not wet, that pigment isn't really dispersing. And I have a feeling that when I paint over it, it's actually gonna blend it out. It's kind of the same thing where you can still see the lines, but it doesn't really. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad, but I think this one's a little bit cooler. Still pretty well, okay. okay. <laughs> but what, what I'm seeing here is that basically whatever hard lines you put down, that is what will stay, and then all of that color and pigment will disperse across the wet surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, Man, that's, that's a great cool. question, Keenan. That is cool stuff. Okay. Another thing that you can do, I don't use this one, I don't use this one as much, but I just want to sh share it with you that it is an option. Let's say you want to get like a really detailed spot and uh, you don't want to use your pencil though. That would be kind of the benefit, but just in case, like just in case, you can take your paintbrush, get it wet, and then actually just pull pigment what? off of the pencil. Oh my gosh, I just did some flex. Oh, that's cool. Stop oh, it. Well, hey, look at that. Okay, just learned this. <gasps> Oh, uh, that's amazing. Oh gosh, how are you doing that? <laughs> okay, let me show you. This is amazing. I just discovered this. Okay, so you're going to take your paintbrush and you're just going to get your your pencil wet and then you're just going to kind of like flick. Okay, mine are really light, but it's coming. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah. There it goes. Awesome. Look at that. That's cool. Okay, so that's how you can get speckles. <laughs> that's also how you can lift up the pigment itself and then paint with said pigment. So if you just want to use a brush how you would use regular watercolor, you can. You would basically pretend that the pigment on these pencils is like a cake pan. Sweet. And you're just pulling from that for the color. Okay. Now I'm also really excited and I believe this is the last one that I have. So if there's more that you want to add after this, let me know. But this one is super exciting to me because I think it's really cool. This one you would actually utilize your pencil shavings. Okay, so you have your sharpener, your, you have your pencil shavings in the bottom. I'm going to take off my lid so I have access to them. I'm going to get an area wet. And is this in frame, Keenan? Yes, it is. Okay. And then I'm going to take the pencil shavings that are just pigment, and I'm going to drop them in. Okay. I don't know. Here, okay. you can use mine because I couldn't figure out how to oh, open that okay. one. Sorry, Taylor. No, you're good. I took the good one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I drop it in this wet area and then I can just use my paintbrush to like touch on these shavings. And then the color, it's just going to like create these textures. That would there. look sweet in your city rainscape at yeah. the bottom. And I did it on this one too. This one dried. I wanted, wanted you to see what it looked like dried. What? So these colors are kind of blending together. We have hard, we have the shavings that stay dark and then they kind of just like bled out around it on the wet surface. So that's just a fun way that you can wow. introduce texture into your painting. Amazing. I am so excited about that speckled thing. I know, that was that's so cool. That was such a fun surprise. Okay. I think that's all the techniques 
that we kind of wanted to um, go over. And then the last bit is me and Taylor just wanted to share with you some fun things that we learned along the way. So like um, some like notes and tips. So for me, I learned, and I kind of said this earlier, that when I'm painting or using watercolor pencils, whenever I add water to it, it lightens the color a lot. And so um, if you like to work light, and we'll go into this more when we actually do the project. So for example, later in the month, we're doing human eyes and skin tones. And I use the watercolor pencils as my first layer for the skin because it stays naturally a lighter value and the colors blend out and diffuse. Okay, so they kind of desaturate a little bit, which is great when you're painting skin tones because you don't want like the most vibrant like purple or blue peeking out underneath that skin. So when you add water to these, they kind of desaturate and they lighten. So I like to use them. I like to use that information for staying light and desaturated. So that's good. And then I also like to use them with watercolors because then I feel like I don't have to layer nearly as much because I can just like use watercolor first and then pencil on top after. And again, we'll go through these different techniques and um, tips and trips along with these projects that we have planned for you. So if you wanna see what that looks like in action, we got that all planned. So that was my, those were my like two biggest things. Taylor, what have you learned? Um, my biggest thing because i'm used to just drawing with the regular colored pencils and since you don't have water to kind of do some of the work for you every detail like you do it exactly how you want it to look you yes. know mm. with these i was trying to draw with these the way i would with those pencils with regular colored pencils. yes but then as soon as i would add water it would take away all that detail and i'm like what the heck am i doing wrong like, what is going on <laughs> but kind of like how you saw in our examples, like you can literally scribble and then use the water to make it do what you want it to do. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. So basically probably how you would want to approach it is you would want to start with putting your, your colors and your blending down first. And then if you want any details, that would kind of be your last step mm -hmm. because you wouldn't want that to blend out with water. So if you were to like, you know, like when we're doing, um, like the eyes, right? Like we would want the skin tones and everything to blend out. But when we do eyelashes or something like those really detailed small areas, that's gonna be your last step. If we did that first, then all of that detail would just be lost with the water. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. And um, again, I think both Taylor and I, there was some learning curves involved, but at the end of the day, I think we have some great projects. And Taylor, do you wanna show them like, yeah. as you were experimenting with these watercolor pencils these are amazing so this is all just the watercolor pencil not any watercolor wow but okay great yeah, isn't that crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but this like how vibrant these are compared to mm -hmm. you know the first layer we did this is like probably four or five layers of colored pencil okay Dang. so it takes some time to get it vibrant but then you get all those really cool textures in it and yeah like the 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 apple like reflection textures yeah. on here are beautiful this was something actually okay so it how you were showing if you were to draw on it before you let it dry completely that is yeah. what happened there it like lifted some of it away okay mm. yeah. so that's where you you could use that to your advantage yeah. that's yeah. super cool i'm impressed taylor <laughs> you're so talented thank you. thank you okay she also did a human eye which is like so cool and did you use paint with this or what was your process with this one this i believe was also just colored pencil or watercolor pencil but i also oh. used a jelly roll for the okay because okay yeah <laughs> yeah get those highlights in. yeah yeah wow so this was a lot of layers too to yeah. really get that that color down yeah wow. but i like it i like how you can still see all the texture marks yes you know? i do too and especially with like the eye and then like being able to see those detailed lines, the eyelashes. Mm -hmm. So like, especially if you guys are just really getting introduced to painting and paint brushes, if you're having a really hard time controlling those thin and thick lines, especially the thin, that's where watercolor pencils can really be your friend because you can go in and you don't have to know how to utilize a brush. You just know that if I take my pencil and do my thin lines, they're gonna stay thin and be the shape that I want. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then did you want 
to show the uh, cherry with the different colors? Oh. Or are we saving that for the... Um, I can... What are you... Sneak peeking? Yeah, let's do a sneak yeah, peek. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about it in the tutorial also, but Ooh. why not? So this was the cherries, and then um, t I'll let you talk. I just started talking about your <laughs> <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> Um Basically, the main difference between these two is just the colors used in it. So these, or this one, I just used the bright colors, and mm -hmm. then this one, I added the neutrals. Um, so you can see how just adding like the neutral colors makes it, what would you say, like gives it more depth like. um, more contrast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think actually the term is in art to have high contrast is uh, chiaroscuro no oh, that's cool <laughs> cool I'm gonna google that and pause I'm gonna make sure that that's right chiaroscuro I'd even spell that uh, chiaroscuro yes I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but basically uh, chiaroscuro in art is when you use strong contrast between lights and darks in the composition. So I would say that that would be more like that because yeah. there's that bright white and that dark. And this one is not as much, but still three-dimensional, still has form. Right. And this is kind of where it comes down to, I think, maybe personal preferences. Mm -hmm. Where Taylor and I were both talking, we kind of lean towards this one a little bit more, both of us. But like this is also gorgeous and there are different artists who prefer to not use such like dark or maybe um, strong darker values and neutrals in their in their work and there's nothing wrong with that again it's really just personal preference that's kind of like if you have watched Aaron's tutorials also a lot of acrylic painters talk about never use black <laughs> like yeah. mix colors to make black but with these like with watercolor pencils it, it's it's I helpful. It is. It's very helpful to get those dark shadows in. Yeah. And I feel like if you cover this one up, like nothing looks wrong with this one at all. It's more of just like the artistic mm -hmm. feel that you mm -hmm. get. And then this one just looks more realistic, I yes. guess. Mm. Yeah. So, um, Taylor, thank you so much for sharing those. And I hope you guys have a better understanding of watercolor pencils and how you can utilize them in your art. Thank you so much for learning with us. Taylor, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge and working with us on this. And um, if you need more information on watercolors in general, we do have a beginner series video that you can refer to. And then keep an eye out for the watercolor pencil tutorials too. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.